I hope everyone is having a good morning. Welcome on in. And Crafty, good morning. I hope you're doing good. Welcome, welcome. I have been good, thank you. I have been good. I had uh, a nice day yesterday where I met with some friends, which was lovely. Uh, it meant I didn't have as much time to do my embroidery, but definitely worth it. Worth it to meet up with friends. I had a lovely time. I hope everyone else had a good weekend as well. Uh, let me let me switch screen really quickly to this one. Yeah, it's a bit dark in here, but then to be fair, it's a bit dark in general. We've got like a lot of rain this weekend. I hope everyone is doing good. We have got another embroidery hoop added to the board. I didn't manage to find a bigger board yesterday, so we are still dealing with I am about to run out of space. <laughs> Uh, at least space that you could see. I can kind of slot it behind the whales, but then you can't see what we've been doing. So I will try and work something else out that I can do. I don't want to hammer anything into the walls because this isn't my final room. This is going to be Shiny's room and it'll be a pain to fill them all back in again. So I don't want to hammer anything. I might just find a really big board <laughs> and put everything on that. Uh, costumes look amazing, thank you! But how can one move? Let's fight in them. I'm fighting all the time my costumes. Every day I wake up, I put on a costume, I fight. I get dressed again and they come onto stream in my pajamas. <laughs> Farik, good morning, I hope you're doing well. And Luna, good morning, I hope everyone is doing well. We have a very cute prompt today. So today the prompt is Filbert the fluffiest dinosaur. Uh, so we have to do like a really soft, fluffy dinosaur. And the reason I'm starting a bit late, which by the way, I apologize for starting late, uh, was because I wanted to do more of like a patchwork style. And that meant I had to wait for the glue to dry because I've had to glue fabric onto here quickly just to hold some space before we start stitching it. So yes, the reason we are a little bit late is because of this little guy. This little guy taking a little while to dry. <laughs> but he's cute and he's worth it, he's worth it. Plus I haven't done anything like this for uh, for this, for this uh, event yet. So I thought that'd be nice. Like a mixture of different fabrics, textures, and then that. Plus I have some beads that spell out filbert so I might hang that across the hoop later. <laughs> So it looks like like a little bedroom <laughs> and give me cute. I am sold on fluffy dino. I am very sold on fluffy dino. I can't wait to see what everyone else does to be honest because I think it's a very cute prompt. But I think you could also go pretty realistic with it if you wanted to and do like an actual like design for a dinosaur. I have decided to go more the plushy route. So he's gonna have little patches on him. He's gonna be really sticky and he's gonna be in a bed. So he's like a little patchwork dinosaur. That's what I figured I'd do. Uh, and I, I think I landed on that pretty quick. I was like, I wanna use fabrics and I want it to be fluffy. The sky is so close to done. Hell. Hell yeah, Luna! You have been working on it really hard to be fair, so I'm not super surprised. Oh, yes, exactly. Pajama, pajama party dinosaur. Oh, yee, dino! Go, good morning, I hope you're doing well. I do actually, I really like the uh, the Twitch, the Twitch dancing emote with the dinosaur. I, I think it's very cute. It is, it is a, it's a heckin' 10 out of 10. I'm trying to get it up, but I keep clicking things. There you go, there you go. Heckin' 10 out of 10 emote right there. It's so cute. Look at him! He's so cute! I love him! Yeah, we we doing a little dinosaur ourselves. I decided to go for a stegosaurus just because I wanted to like a horizontal dinosaur. It's weird to say, but I wanted a, a, a dinosaur that went horizontal rather than up, and I wanted one that was relatively recognizable because I knew I was going to make it plushy and like squishy. So I figured a stegosaurus was pretty recognizable, uh, even if he's very soft and round. 
So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a Stegosaurus. Uh, and I'm going to try and stay away a little bit further from black today. Um, I've been using a lot of black thread for my outlining, and I do think it works really well just to get an outline. Oh, I should also show you the one we did yesterday. Uh, I didn't use black yesterday either. I'm just trying to use a little less of it because otherwise I run out of black really quickly. And when I do have some coming in the post, uh, I don't, I don't want to use all of it too quickly. Uh, this was yesterday's. Yesterday's prompt was like a lantern of the Druid Queen or something like that. So I did like a little hand study. Um, I didn't have a lot of time. I was out of the house uh, most of the day yesterday. Uh, so I quickly did one in the evening, but I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it looks pretty cute. Uh, the hand looks good. And that's honestly what I was really studying was like, I did loads of practice hands and stuff like that yesterday. So I'm happy. The hand looks how I wanted. It. It's not a very exciting lantern. I am aware that it's a little bit boring, but uh, yes, it, it got me doing a hand study and hands are hard. Oh, do you not wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna, there you go. There we go. Oh dear. Also, I apologize. I am just wearing pajamas. It's a pajama day today. I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling like dressing up. <laughs> so excuse me, I will be in pajamas all day. Thank you very much. Good morning, anime. I saw your submissions. Yes, they looked very, very cool. Hell yeah, that you've like caught up. Cause you're up to date now, right? You've done, yeah, I think I saw all three of them. So yee, well done, heckin' impressive. It would have taken me a week and I would have had it half finished. It's really small though, like, I think it took less than two hours from start to finish. Uh, the only thing that took longer was I was did a lot of hand studies in the morning because I wanted to practice drawing some hands. Uh, I don't think you're gonna be able to see any of them because they're really, really light, except for the one that I ended up using, but yeah, that, was, that, that, that took a while. But other than that, the embroidery itself, very quick. <laughs> Ah, oh, dear. Filth! We can make boob? We can't make boob today. <laughs> there was a time and a place for boob, and boob is not a today stream, but maybe it's another stream. I don't know what the prompts are gonna be. Good morning, Grab it, by the way. I hope you're doing well. Well, guys, see, it doesn't matter how you dress. Yee, it's pajamas. Also, Chucky, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I just didn't... I don't know, you get days. It's because it's raining, I think, and it's been raining for like, the last 24 hours, and I was just like... I'm not going out in it anywhere. I'm just gonna wear pajamas. <laughs> You have to do it. Yee! Congratulations! Hell yeah! See, I've been quite lucky because I've had time to do this every day. I have not got too behind yet. I'm sure it'll happen eventually, but I'm not there yet. In my house, we craft PJs. Yee. Good. Good. Good crafts, honestly. Sunday is a PJ day and I was forced to get dressed with I have silver clay glass yesterday. Ooh! And now in social life and energy, too many strangers. Fair. Fair. Do not overestimate how much comfort you can get from the nice, soft clothes. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see. My, no, I don't think you can really see it. I have like soft, these are like really squishy, soft fabric. The, the tops, whatever, but the trousers, really nice. <laughs> They're really, really soft. They're not too thick either. So like, even if it's not the coldest weather, these are still pretty good. All right. Is it, no, no, it's not, no, it's more like a fleece. I, that's, that's why I'm like, I don't think it's gonna show up. It's like a fleece fabric. No, it is fleece fabric. They're made out of a very thin fleece. So nice, so nice. All right, let me let me switch screens really quickly for you so you can see Filbert in a little bit more detail. Uh, it is named. I didn't name it Filbert, but I do think Filbert is a very good name for him, so I'm okay with it. This is kind of where I've started again. This is why it's taken a little bit longer, just because I've had to do like a little collage of fabrics. I mean, I didn't have to, but I chose to. I chose to do a little collage of fabrics, and so it's taken a little longer to get prepared this morning. I'm still going to be doing quite a lot of embroidery. Um, but I do think having some of the background colors will make it a little easier because otherwise these bigger hoops do tend to take about six to eight hours, which is fine. I'm happy to do it for six to eight hours, but sometimes it's nice to do something a little bit simpler. And since I was so busy yesterday, I wanted to do something that was really fun today and just have like a chill time and not have to worry about filling in really, really big spaces with satin stitch and all that because I can do it and it is relaxing. Fleas, yes, yeah, made out of actually thousands, thousands of fleas all, all stitched together. It's genuinely very impressive the way they make this fabric. Like you'd never, you'd never guess. I believe you have a stream and I'm due to, oh, good luck with making the furniture. You got this, I believe. Oh dear, I hope that it goes smoothly and you aren't missing any parts. <laughs> Nothing rolls underneath the couch. Oh dear, that the instructions are clear and in order. Oh dear. I do actually quite like building furniture, but I definitely have to be in the mood for it. <laughs> Which, I feel like that's a lot of things, but like, I, I like it, but yeah, there are certain moods I get in where I'm like, if somebody asked me to build furniture while I was feeling like that, pfft, not gonna happen. Ada, hey, sorting up baby Cthulhu soon. Hell yeah, very nice. I'll be fine, I will. 
really, hopefully. <laughs> you just never know how it's gonna go with making furniture. I have days where I'm like super like, yeah, yeah, let's build some furniture, yeah. And then I have days where I look at these set and instructions, I'm like, mm. <laughs> nah. Yeah, you know what, it's a nice thought. I, I, think, I think I'll abstain, thank you anyway. Uh, you own all you've left on the skirt is to sew the bow and then I can start on the course. Are you excited to start a different part of the costume? I don't know if you feel the same way as me, but I always find it very exciting when you can move on to the next part because it feels like a, a very easy way of recording progress. Hell yeah. Uh, also, by the way, I'm just going around the outside of some of these shapes and just further attaching them down. It's not really necessary. The, the, the glue that I use is actually a pretty good glue, but I think it will make the edges look just a little bit neater. And also, I'm going to be embroidering it anyway, so of course I'm going to embroider the edges. You know, when, eh. <laughs> it'd look weird if you only embroidered. Well, you know what though? That would actually be a stylistic choice. Only embroidering in the middle would be interesting. Uh, personally, it's not a style that I would really do, but I think it's cool. Uh, also, there are patches of glue. As you could imagine, when I said that I, I glued this fabric down, funnily enough, there are patches of glue, which means certain areas are just a little bit harder to sew through. So if I'm looking like I'm struggling a little bit, uh, it's probably that I'm just going through a section of glue. I do have some finger little cappy things if I need them, but I think for the most part, I can probably just push through it. It's only these very small sections. I didn't honestly use that much glue because I knew that when the glue hardened, it would be hard to stitch through it. So I was like, ah, we'll, uh, we'll go easy on the glue just so that I don't, I don't have to struggle too much. I also would like, this is a pillowcase. It's meant to be a pillowcase. Uh, I would like to have this bit like be the edge of the pillowcase you know where like it folds over hell yeah like it doesn't need to be like a full straight line but i want it to be a little bit a little bit like yeah that's the that's the edge of the pillowcase nice oh dear i'll do the same thing on the other side as well eventually <laughs> When we get to the other side. Super excited, I'm done working the skirt, I just have to get the front bone, but I'm ready to do the corset. Yee! I, I love those moments in costume making where you're like really, really like, you're, you're moving from bit to bit and it feels like you can visibly see the progress that you've been making. I love it. I think it's a, a really nice part. Very satisfying, because they do take an awful lot of work and effort. But it's not, nice to see a visual representation of the progress you've made. Other than like, oh, no, because that's the thing is they take so long that you almost don't see the progress as it's happening. Or at least maybe you do, but I don't. <laughs> I feel like you just don't see it. This just takes such a long time. There we go. Put some there. And then wiggle this across. Probably won't be as much shading today, but I do think that makes sense because it is meant to be a cute piece. Just a, a cute, simple piece. Nothing too, too dramatic. We've done some dramatic pieces. Let's have a nice, cute day where the drawing is cute and the artwork is simple uh, and yes that that honestly sounds pretty good to me a nice cute day the skirt has already taken four months yeah i feel that i feel that in my soul i have been working on two shoulders now for about well yeah about four or five months and there are many times where you look at it and you're like have i really made any progress and you kind of have, I like that's why I like keeping the vods from my streams because otherwise it's like no it feels very much like no but when you look back at the vods you're like ah yes that's why it's because it's taken like you know hundreds of hours of course oh dear there you go Nick good morning I hope you're doing well and Scott thank you so much for the egg smash I hope you're both doing really well we are doing uh, the next prompt the prompt today is Philbert the fluffiest dinosaur so we are making Philbert the fluffiest dinosaur. We're making him as a plushie though. So rather than him being like an actual dinosaur, he's gonna be a plushie of a dinosaur. And I nearly just sewed a hair of mine in there. Uh, if you saw that, don't worry about it. It's one of my hairs. Oh dear. I think it would be a simple one for me to do because yesterday I did a lot. Yeah, because you were doing a few, I, yeah. You don't, you don't want to wear yourself out too early because it's gonna be a long, a long heckin' ride. Like save savor your energy a little bit i mean i even said that when i submitted yesterday i was like i want to save my energy a little bit because i would like to do some really big impressive pieces but i can't do that every single every single day uh and also i keep running out of things so <laughs> thread running out i feel like it's not a it's not an issue a lot of the people participating i have but it is an issue that i am having is that i am just going to continuously run out of thread <laughs> Specifically, it's going to predominantly be black, I think. I'm going to run out of black a lot because I'm using black a lot. But yeah, 
So far, no one else has complained. I just don't get it. Like, why is no one else running out of thread? What's going on? And yeah, I seem to be running out of thread every other day. Crazy. You out the window. Process? What is that? Pfft. Never heard of them. Must not be in this house. There we go. And get that. There we are. Gonna get some more thread in a second because I'm running a little short because it's quite a big piece. There we are. We have like a little outlined pillowcase now. Again, we're keeping it simple. And I think that looks. It looks cute. Yeah? It's cute. A nice cute little pillowcase. It's already got some details on it because the fabric has like a little pattern. It's nice. You know, it's not, not the most complicated thing in the world. It is definitely a different process, so I guess, to what I've been doing recently. So even though it's not the most complicated thing in the world, hopefully it will stand out in a nice way. Oh dear. There we go. And get that in there. Nice, okay. Let's tie this off and get some more. I've got the other half of the blue thread for the other cushion or pillow. We've got some cushions on the bed as well. So we've got some pillowcases and some little round cushions, which I kind of want to make look like, what do you call them? The, the cake with the cream that you roll up into a log. I want them to look like that, but I can't remember. Cake log? <laughs> cake log doesn't sound like what it is, but it, you know, a little, a little a log cake. I want them to look like that. Oh dear. Doing quite well. I'm taking my thoughts as well. Hell yeah! Good on you. Feather, good morning! I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. We've been doing an embroidery a day. Uh, and we're on day- well, technically though, complicated explanation. Because we've done a lot more than four embroideries. We've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days of an embroidery a day right now. Oh dear. A Swiss roll! Oh, actually that sounds right. It might be a Swiss roll. Oh, say Dex, good morning, I hope you're doing well. I think it might be a Swiss roll. Uh, did at last, good morning, and Erd, good morning. Oh my God, welcome on in everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day. I think there's a few cakey things, quite possibly. Quite possibly, because you also have like caterpillar cake that's made like that. Oh my God, Cthulhu. Heck, thank you so much for the 11 months. That's very heckin' kind of you. Welcome on in. The prompt today, uh, Cthulhu, is uh, Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. So we are doing Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. Good morning, I hope you're doing good. Oh dear, hi miss. I hope you're doing good as well. I'm well, thanks. I've been doing a lot of working on some of these. They're awesome, thank you. I have been having a really good time making them. And it's been really wholesome as well, because again, like I assumed that people maybe wouldn't like my embroideries because they're not digital art. They're like very, very traditional and kind of, I don't want to say that they're old fashioned, but I guess embroidery does sometimes get stereotyped as a more old fashioned thing. I don't necessarily agree with that stereotyping, but I think that there is like a uh, embroidery is for old people kind of uh, incorrect messaging. I don't agree with it, but you know. Uh, oh, do you wanna? Okay, I see the issue, but I, I don't think it's a big issue. I think you're making a good issue out of nothing there, Thread. <laughs> Oh dear. But yeah, I'm glad that everyone's been as positive about it as they have. It's Gerald's time to shine. Uh, Shifty, did you see that anime in the first prompt when they were asked to, to redraw a cadet in their style? Anime did Gerald. Did you see that? Oh dear. Very, very cool. Very cool. Oh dear. Her caterpillar cake is not- Oh no, no, it's just like the, the Colin the caterpillar cake. It's like a kid's birthday cake, isn't it? I think it's chocolate? With like lots of extra chocolate bits, if memory serves. It's been a minute since I had a caterpillar cake, but I think it's chocolate. <laughs> chocolate flavoured. Yes, I think. Pretty sure Colin's chocolate. Oh dear, it's been a good morning. I have 16 quarts of green beans. Oh my god, delicious. Old fashioned, it's only been around for a few thousand years. You know, it's old fashioned. <laughs> you know, that's not the best way of putting it, huh? Because <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. You know, it is an older skill, but I think I meant more like it's associated with the elderly rather than because I mean, it is old fashioned too. <laughs> oh dear. Both works, both works. Oh, I did see that very nice. Yee, yeah, I thought you'd like that. When I was like, ah, oh, the first prompt's doing that, I was wondering if anyone would do Gerald. And then, uh, yes. Anime did. Anime took on the task and it was stunning. 
a very, very beautiful piece of art. Loved it. Oh dear. Styrofoam, good morning. You've got a good name, thanks. It, I love it when people compliment because it makes me feel like I made the right decision because it was not going to be my name initially. And it wasn't my name when I started streaming, but I have grown very, very attached to it uh, since then. So yes, I am, I am glad that I made the correct decision and kept this name. Oh dear. Colin the Caterpillar? The bad chocolate cake. Wait, you think it's bad? What? Well, I, this is Colin slander. I don't know if we can have this Colin slander in my chat. Oi, oi, oi. Wait a second. Wait a second. Colin, Colin is, is first of all, doing their goddamn best in a world of many, many cakes. Colin, Colin is trying. Uh, second of all, it's shaped like a caterpillar. I might, uh, I think it might be time for a gel party. Ah! Are you gonna make- wait, are you gonna make one? <gasps> That'd be very cool. If I had more plushy style fabric, I would- I would definitely consider making a plushy for one of the prompts, but I- I don't really have a lot of it right now and it's kind of expensive. <laughs> so, it's a great idea. Uh, maybe not this time, you know? But if you already have some around, eh? Eh? Not a bad idea. But no one else- actually, I say bet no one else would do that. Somebody else did, uh, and I don't remember who it was, but I thought it was amazing. In the first prompt, uh, someone made a, a cadet plushie. You'll have to go back and check it because I don't remember who it is, but somebody did that. Oh dear. The bell the ruffles got time for a training session. Ooh, to get it off the mannequin. It's all coming together. Hell yeah. Very, very nice. I think I might make the art, but I might over a few days. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Fair, fair, fair. Fair. Yeah, we're doing a little plushie, but not like making an actual plushie. We're just making like a little patchwork dinosaur. Um, I put it in the in the work in progress and it, people seem to like it, so that's nice. So I was like, yeah, I wanna... I, I, as soon as I saw the prompt, I was like, it's patchwork time. I'm making not an actual patchwork plushie, but like an embroidery of a patchwork plushie, hell yeah. I've done a frog, an octopus, this will be dinosaur time now. Hell yeah. I think people say it's older fashioned as it seems like once you get a little older is when most people develop an interest in it. Not many youngsters have the patience to learn it. I think, I do feel like to an extent though, and I, again, do correct me if you don't agree or, or say if you don't agree because I don't think there's a wrong opinion here. With the, with the emphasis on taking time for yourself and like, you know, taking mental health breaks and stuff like that, I actually know a lot of young people that have got into cross stitch kits, specifically. Um, maybe not this style of embroidery, but like, you know, generally kits that help you when you're just starting out. Because it's something where people can take like a few hours to themselves in a week to do something and they don't necessarily feel like they're wasting their time because I think a lot of people when they're relaxing have like it's it's not something that I agree with but I do understand why because I'm the same but like it feels like when you're relaxing that you're wasting your time uh, a lot of people I think are getting into those kind of like art kits not just embroidery but like similar to that um, for like mental health and for like taking time and relaxation for themselves and that is I think quite a new movement like uh, you know more of the, the mental health stuff and the emphasis on taking time for yourself, I do think that's a little bit new. I'm not saying that the older generation isn't partaking because I would hope that everyone's partaking, but I do think it's a newer, a newer vibe, yes, of more emphasis on that, which is a good thing, I think. I think it's one of the better things that's been happening <laughs> is more people uh, having a higher focus on their mental health and the things that they need to do to keep themselves feeling okay throughout the week. Oh dear. And yeah, I think cross stitch kits has been like a lot more popular because of that. Because again, it's more approachable to someone who's new to the hobby than just buying hoops and, and going for it. <laughs> oh dear. Art first plushie later, yeah! Art first plushie later. Oh dear, it's so heavy, I feel that. Heavy costumes, <laughs> a vibe. I like a good cross stitch kit. I haven't done one for ages, but uh, they were like cross stitching is originally what got me into the idea of doing more embroidery. But this was when I was about seven years old. But um, yeah, I really, really liked it. 
but it's been a while. You make a good point, I know exactly what you mean. It wasn't like that when I was young and I'm happy that it's happening. So much better than just burying the feelings, yeah. Well, it's as well, it's a bit more, again, a lot of stigma around mental health in there, but it's a little bit more approachable for a lot of people than even going to a doctor. Um, and you know, I've met a lot of people who just literally, they just do the kits and they every now and again, they're having a hard week, they buy a cross stitch kit and they do that in the evenings and it just helps distract them a little bit. I don't think it's a, a, a good replacement for other things, but it's, I guess, a good additional thing a lot of people are doing. Like I wouldn't say, oh yeah, you can replace mental health, you know, support with embroidery, but it, you know, it's a nice thing to do alongside. <laughs> Oh. And price-wise, they're normally like, especially because again, I, I can't speak for everyone, but most people I know get relatively small ones, ones they can finish within a week if they just spend like a couple of evenings on it. They're only a few pounds. They're like pretty cheap. So they're like relatively accessible. And again, they're probably more accessible than starting from completely scratch like what I do. If it helps, I'm all for it. Hell yeah. Same, 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 same. You never tried. It depends. And they're not for everyone. But again, it's not it's not a huge investment to give it a go. So a cross stitch kit, you can literally buy them in Poundland as well, just for a heads up. Like they don't they sell them in quite a lot of places now. Um, but yeah, you literally get the needle, the threads you need, and the pattern. So like the like the, the picture that you then embroider on top of. Everything you need to to do it. Nice and easy. In a little in a little kit with some little instructions should you need it i mean it is very much like filling in the dots a lot of the time so like they will print the color on the the fabric so you put the fabric in its hoop or whatever it's in and then you just kind of like cross over the colors so there is instructions a lot of the time but they're not very necessary like you put the blue on the blue the green on the green it's only when you do the bigger ones, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend as a first one if you're looking to do it for relaxation, uh, that they that the instructions are a lot more helpful. In the in the smaller ones, it's like ah, green goes on green, and you can kind of like common sense it to an extent. I've been doing cross stitch kits, and yeah, uh, I will do a month or years and not do one. But now I'm just I'm thinking about getting another one. But I do massive ones. Yeah, the massive ones definitely do take a while. I think probably a better investment if you know you already enjoy it because you will get a really beautiful piece at the end of it, but maybe not so good for people for their first kit. Well, then again, there are people that thrive on that, I guess, but yeah, I'd, I'd normally recommend a smaller one for your first, and then if you enjoy it, there are some much, much larger ones that you can do that will take you longer but and be like a little bit more challenging, but you'll get like a beautiful piece at the end. A lot more variety in the bigger ones as well. But yeah, like you can get like a week. I, I had one uh, for Christmas and I'll be honest, I did reuse it for parts. I'm so sorry to the person who gave it to me, but I did use it. I have already used it, uh, but I, I, I reused it for all of its parts. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so I got one of like, it was like a little cactus. It said like, welcome home. It was very cute. And it would have probably taken me about one hour to finish. I am someone who does embroidery anyway. So embroideries do tend to take me a little less long because I have like a background in it. But yeah, it would have just been like a nice afternoon thing that I could have done. I think it was cute. Uh, I tried cross stitch as a kid, looking good on top. Uh, looking like a rat's nest, yeah. Oh dear. And I did not find relaxed at all. The knotting drove me nuts. Uh, painting is my way of relaxing. Hell yeah. Different strokes for different folks. I think it's a good one to try if you're curious, but it's definitely not for everyone, you know? Well, then no art form is for everyone. Like, I can tell you that I find embroidery relaxing until the cows come home, but it doesn't mean that you're ever going to find it. The same relaxation in it that I find. <laughs> oh, dear. Unfortunately, I kind of wish that it, it worked like that, where I, like, just because I find it really relaxing, I could, like, impart that onto you, and now you find it relaxing as well. But, uh, yeah, nah, it's, it's just... Unfortunately, art things are not like that. You have to find one that works, that you enjoy. But for me, it, it, I do really find it to be a, a lovely source of relaxation. It's why when like when I'm having my work looked at and everyone's like, oh, that's mad. I can't believe you're doing that. And I'm just here like having the most relaxing week of my life. <laughs> um, like whenever, whenever people look at my my from the from the discord, from the chroma core stuff, people keep looking at my work and be like, oh, my God, that's so much commitment. That's oh, my God. Wow, that's mental. You're mad. And I'm like, 
having the most relaxing week of my life. <laughs> I feel amazing. This has been such a lovely escape for me. Could on, couldn't recommend enough, but because other people don't find embroidery to be that same way, they look at what I'm doing and are like, you're crazy. That must be so stressful. How are you doing that? And it's like, I don't know how to tell you that I'm finding this incredibly relaxing. I'm having, like, if I was competing with everyone else, it'd probably be, like, a little bit more stressful because, you know, I'd want to be doing well, but since I don't have that pressure on me, yeah, I'm having a great time. <laughs> oh, dear. I think it's took me three years, but I wasn't doing it constantly. It's just as a mood took me. And I think for a hobby, that's the best way of doing it. Like, there shouldn't be a pressure to, like, have to keep doing it if it's something that you're meant to be doing to relax, right? So if you want to take a break at it and then pick it up in a couple months' time, as long as you're finding that's relaxing, I don't think that, I think that's fine. Yeah, just look, that's just, just perfect for you. Constantly make craft buddies, yeah. I just, I'm having a really good time. I just, I don't know. Oh, it would be nice if you could impart your relaxation on other people, but yeah, it's, it's not good for everyone. Personally, I recommend a craft embroidery kit, like a little, a little cross stitch kit if you're curious about embroidery, because it, it, gets the the initial cost is not very high so it's a bit more accessible for more people and also if you end up not liking it you haven't wasted a lot of money and time i would normally recommend just a little little cross stitch kit if you're curious if you think you might find it relaxing that way if you don't yeah no, nothing 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 lost you know trying to get that filled in i would actually like to maybe do like a little a couple of extra stitches just to like emphasize the the creases in the fabric a little bit should probably do that while i remember huh let's emphasize some of these fabric creases we'll come back and do the rest of it in a sec oh dear i've been distracted again i wish to i wish to add fabric creases oh dear what is the music today uh this is cult of the lamb yes same with hand sewing i don't know if you find it stressful are you finding it really relaxing same look with rhinestone i can sit for hours and hours just putting one stone into fabric i do i also like anything sparkly i do i kind of i am inclined to agree uh anything sparkly i do find exceptionally relaxing just adding sparkles to things is lovely lovely i need my pliers you got this go take care of yourself luna go uh, go go do your craft safely We'll be here when you need when you want to come back. <laughs> oh dear. Nothing mentioned, nothing gained. Exactly, exactly. I hate hand sewing. Yeah, again, like it's definitely not for everyone. A lot of people are not gonna like it. But again, it's when people come in there like, you're mad for doing that, and I'm just like, am I? I don't know, I'm having a pretty good time. Like <laughs> I'm feeling pretty relaxed every day. Uh, I think doing crafts that, that stress you out, that's more, and but doing it because of the effect, like that's in some ways more impressive. If you're doing it for a competition, at least. If you're just doing it for, uh, for comfort, I don't know why you would do that. But, <laughs> but generally, like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I struggle to see what I'm doing is particularly impressive, mainly just because I'm just having a really nice time. It's really relaxing. I wake up, I see a prompt, I'm like, oh, cool, I get to do another fun embroidery today. What shall I do today? Doobity doobity do. <laughs> it's like very relaxed. Oh dear. All right, we'll skip back across now to here. Uh, well, I'll just do like another little teeny tiny stitch. Ah oh, dear. The thread past some beeswax does make sure it doesn't knot and it strengthens the thread. Yeah, but it's, <sighs> so I do have beeswax. I actually have my beeswax in a little package to one side here. It does, but it's also a pain in the ass and take, makes everything take longer. So <laughs> I literally have had that for years. You'll never, you'll, there's not a single clip of me ever using it on stream. <laughs> oh dear. Then again, again, if that, if that makes it more relaxing for you, you're all good. You're all hecking good. Personally, pff, can't be asked with it. I literally own one because I felt like I should own one. Uh, because everyone was like, oh, it's gonna make everything so much easier for you, Jelly. And I was like, you're probably right. But you know what? Screw that. I'm gonna. <laughs> it's not making it more fun for me, so it sits on the side. <laughs> oh, dear. As with a lot of other craft things, where people were like, oh, Jelly, this will really help you, so I get it. And then I'm like, no! <laughs> this is not the vibe. I like, I like just every now and again undoing my knots, I, I find. <laughs> it's fine. 
I will say I'm pretty good at undoing most knots, and I'm pretty good at recognizing the type of knots that I've made as well by accident. I think because I've been dealing with it for so long now, um, that when I when I do create a knot in my fabric, uh, or not my fabric, in my thread, I can pretty quickly identify if it's one that I can undo, if it's one that I'm going to have to, uh, what you call it, like I'm gonna have to cut and fix. Oh dear, also Mistress, good morning. I hope you're doing well. That is not particularly impressive. Has been raised quite a bit over the years for being. Nah, it, I think I think impressive stuff for me are endurance sewing, <laughs> sewing endurance. Oh, uh, yeah. And I am I am. That's what I find. Like I'm more impressed with myself when kind of like with what Luna's doing. Like when something takes a really long time. <laughs> I know that's not the only difficult kind of sewing, but for me, that that's it. Yeah. Oh. My machine does it so much neater and faster than me, honestly, fair. Uh, do you use that hand flame particularly strong, but sometimes it makes it hard to pull the thread through the fabric. Yeah, there's like, it's it's one of those things where it's like up and down. I think some people, they swear by it and it makes the whole experience much easier for them. But then there are other people like myself, like feathered, like Luna, who it's like, oh, we're aware of it. It ain't for me. But I do like trying things. Like the reason I bought it in the first place was because I wanted to give it a go because I've heard good reviews. And again, not everything is for everyone. It's not for me, but I can understand why other people do like it. Oh, I give them not to my partner because they stress me out. Do they? I, I don't know. There's like, again, it's it, not for everyone, but I find when I have like a knot in the fabric, it's almost like a little problem solver, you know, where it's like, oh, let me, let me, let me problem solve this knot quickly uh, and see if I can get it out without damaging the fabric. It's always, I guess, like a bit of a, a, a bit of a game, but uh, which probably is a game that I shouldn't be playing because I might damage my fabric. But yeah, I, I guess, I guess, because it always feels like a can I do it, can I not kind of thing. It uh, it makes it feel a little bit more, a little bit more fun. <laughs> but I also, it it can be frustrating, especially when you're on like a deadline or you feel like you need to go a bit quicker. Like when things start knotting and you're like, come on now. Come on now, fabric. I told you we had to get this finished for tonight, and now you're knotting my thread. Oi, 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 oi. Okay. This is linen thread, and I do not have this. No? Oh, so I've had linen thread before. I don't get it very often, is the thing, but I've had it before. George, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. We are, we are drawing, well, drawing. We are, God, I will do this every single stream. I'll tell you that I'm drawing. Meanwhile, literally doing stuff with thread. You can literally, <laughs> you can see that I'm lying to you. Um, yeah, we are embroidering a, a piece. Uh, the prompt for today, it was Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. So I am currently making Filbert the fluffiest dinosaur and he is very fluffy and I love him very much. Uh, and But we are, we're just doing the pillowcase at the moment, which <laughs> a little bit boring maybe, but they do need to get done. We need to, we, we need pillowcases. We need him to be, I want him like tucked up in bed, you know? That's my vibe. The vibe I'm going for for Filbert is he is literally like tucked up in bed with like a couple of blankets over him. He's got all of his extra pillows and he, he is not only he is fluffy, but he is in a fluffy space. That's what we're doing. A fluffy, fluffy dinosaur. Thank you for the luck, Shifty. Take care of yourself. Ah, oh dear. And get some of them, but the old knots go at the ice, but he's, he can name knots. Hey, that is that is very impressive to be fair. Uh, Lovely, I hope you're doing well as well, George. I'm doing good. I am in love with today's prompt because it's a cute prompt and I love, I love a good cute prompt. I am very, very sold on uh, on doing a little dinosaur plushie. I think that's super cute. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're doing a little dinosaur plushie and I'm having a great time. It did mean I had to start stream a little late because I needed to get myself sorted for this, but you know, I would argue worth it for Filbert. We'll do it for him. <laughs> oh dear. I'm just getting some little lines into the into the bedding so it looks like it's all scrunched up near him. He's got all the warmth of the bedding next to him. Very good. Oh dear. I love untangling things. It exercises my faith. It's a challenge, but not really. I'll see, I don't like doing like knots in electrics, like like headphone wires, like getting knotted. I don't enjoy that, but I like working out knots and fabric. So I guess I'm like, act like that, but the opposite, flip it. And then I'm like, yeah, that's me. Weird, but again, yeah, different strokes for different folks. Actually, I'm gonna leave that there because I don't have too much around the edge. 
Uh, and then I might just... Should I focus on getting this bit thickened up a little? Um, no, I think actually that's okay. We're going a little simplified with the embroidery today because I want it to look cute. Also, Gev, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to It's Philbert. Philbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. Keep that to one side because I might be able to use that. Uh, and we've got we got the bedding outline now. Let's do Philbert because I would like to get him popping out and then we'll do our Swiss rolls. Hell yeah. Swiss roll time after that. I feel like they use a random gen <laughs> Maybe. Oh dear. I, I, I can't say how they come up with the prompts, but it's potential. Oh dear. I'm doing well, thanks. It's been a chill weekend for me. I mean, I met my detective yesterday, but it was too, too tired to do anything. Fair. Oh dear. I'm glad that you've had a nice chill weekend though, because it always feels like you're doing like a lot of work all the time. I'm glad you've got a little bit of time to chill, even if you wanted to be productive. Maybe your body needed a bit, a bit of a chill time to, to relax after all of the work. Well, that's a, that's a knot that I won't be able to get out, but it's right at the end, so I'm not actually that worried. I'll just trim it out like that. Let's outline Filbert. Oh, this looks like Rob. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. Oh, do you need to go? Take care, Rob. <laughs> Hello and goodbye. Oh, dear Handy, good morning. I hope you're doing well. It's wonderful to hear your voice. How are you? Oh, dear, I'm good, thank you. We've been doing an embroidery every day. So we've done eight embroideries so far. And hell yeah, this is this is now filbert time. It's now filbert time. I've actually as well got to one side some beads which have the, the name filbert spelled out. So that at the end, I can add the filbert beads. <laughs> I'm also, oh yeah, I haven't mentioned this. Um, I wanted it to be super, super fluffy. So what I'm going to do is I've got the hoop backwards. So that again, I've done this with a few of them now. I'm going to trim this really, really short at the end. And I'm going to put like cotton wool kind of fluff around the edge. So it looks like it's surrounded by clouds. <laughs> Very proud of myself. Uh, so yes, when, when we're nearer the finish, I will be doing that. Yes, I'm very excited about that. Mm -mm -mm. That's gonna be good. That's gonna be good times. All right, let's start like here because I do kind of want to start separating the steg stegosaurus spikes and getting the in insidey bits done. Yes, there we are. You lost stream? Uh, I've only lost two frames today so far, Handy. So I'm going to assume it might be on your end and you might need to refresh. Although, having said that, if you've lost stream, you couldn't hear any of that advice. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh dear. If you keep it up with the embroidery, thank you. Yeah, it's been really, really fun. Oh dear. Then it was me. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes it's like, it's definitely me because I can see like me dropping frames and stuff. But today I've actually been very good on frames. I've only lost two, which is a weird amount to have lost to be honest. But you know, I, I don't make the rules. Today I lost two frames. I don't know where they went. If anyone finds them, you know, send them my way. So this is going to take quite a lot of outlining, uh, if you couldn't tell, because it's a fluffier fabric, it just like sinks into it, which is good. You know, I, I wanted a fluffy fabric and this is what I get. But it means that we're going to have to go over the same areas a bit. So like recently when we were doing outlining, we've kind of been able to do one pass and then that's it. That won't be the case today. Uh, there will be multiple passes over most of the outlining. Uh, it's specifically on Filbert. The rest of it, not so much. But on Filbert, yes, because he he is he needs a nice proper outline, and yeah, just kind of how it goes, isn't it? With a with a thicker fabric, requires a little bit more to to get it to really stick down. But it'd be worth it because he's going to be well secured in place by the end. We love we love a nice well secured Filbert. Go. And in there. And then scoot that over there. What? I'm gonna move you a little bit because I'm gonna knock you off the desk. Oh dear. Maybe the ocean near you isn't suitable for jellyfish right now? No? What's happened? What's happened? Algae levels and also try reducing the tree. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Sorry. Oh, I was like, wait, what's happened to the ocean? Is it okay? I haven't been looking at it recently. Is the ocean all right? What happened to it? Do we need to intervene? Okay. So now he has a good, strong outline. A good, strong outline for a good, strong boy. There we go. Oh, dear. Oh, heck. 
I always keep things sorted just in case, and we have canal. Oh, canals. Salty canals. Oh. Whoa. Fancy. Do you get jellyfish in your salty canals? Or oh, not really? <laughs> they're not. Maybe they're not feeling the vibes. You know, I don't know if jellyfish need a whole lot of salt. So <laughs> maybe no. Oh dear. Let me just neaten this up a little bit. It's not terrible. It just needs a little bit of a pink kind of pull it in a bit. There you go. And then you can join these two together. There. There he is. There he is. <laughs> His spines are coming along nicely. Oh dear, is this a lot of jellyfish on the holiday there? Nice! Also, go good morning! I hope you're doing well. I don't think I welcomed you earlier. I hope you are doing good. Good morning, good morning! Oh dear. So the ocean, they should be good. Hell yeah. Okay, glad to hear that the ocean is okay. I had a small moment of panic there where I thought maybe the ocean wasn't okay, but it seems like I maybe overreacted. The ocean is alright. <laughs> the shark will be able to film them not so much. Apparently they're drug addicts now. Oh no. Can people stop hecking with animals for one minute? I swear. Oh dear. It's not for buying it, you definitely know that. Yeah, it's like uh, Red Bull, but but cocaine. <laughs> but not Red Bull at all. But it's like entirely different and much more illegal than Red Bull. <laughs> so actually, it's a pretty bad analogy. Oh dear. Doing well, hell yeah. Glad to hear it go. We we did an embroidery off stream yesterday because I was I was meeting Queenie and Bait, so I wanted to I didn't want to like do a stream in the morning when I was having to leave pretty early, and I did my embroidery in the evening. <laughs> I nearly didn't have time for it, but I just about snuck it in. Not crowd jellyfish was one party stung me. No, so I guess jellyfish are bad. Listen, no, if they sting you, you're okay. I wouldn't hold it against all jellyfish, but you're welcome to hold it against that one particular jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that one? A bad egg. We don't we don't claim them. <laughs> oh dear. I have accidentally swum with stinging jellyfish before and I have been incredibly lucky. We generally didn't realise that they were because otherwise my parents would have stopped us, you know? But we figured, well, other people were in the ocean, so it's probably okay for us to be in the ocean. Big sheep mentality there, honestly, from from me. But <laughs> Yeah, so we went in and then afterwards we were like, oh, I wonder what kind of jellyfish they were. Let's look them up. And we were looking up like non-poisonous or venomous jellyfish and we couldn't find them anywhere. So we were just looking up like then jellyfish that were like regional ones that you get in the area. And it was apparently not a regional jellyfish. It was not a jellyfish that was meant to be in that area. And it clearly just drifted out a little bit, but it was definitely venomous. <laughs> and like it wouldn't kill you unless you were allergic to it, but it would hurt. So we, we we definitely didn't get stung because you would apparently know and yes I don't remember what kind of jellyfish it was actually. I have to look it up again. I remember very much what it looked like It was a big jellyfish um, But it had like a lot of small ones around it, which were the ones that we were mainly around But yeah, the main one was a, a big a big boy jellyfish and it was on its own I could probably find out what it is actually because it, it definitely had a relatively distinct look just doing his best i didn't feel it so he was very kind for a stingy boy yeah i guess that i guess true they didn't if they didn't hurt then you yeah, know they went easy on you i guess <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad that they wasn't too bad because honestly jellyfish stings especially because it's in the middle of when you're like swimming most of the time like you can get stung in shallow water but for a lot of people it's when they're like actively swimming it's super dangerous because it can give you like a real shock when you're you know already swimming so like it can stop you swimming very scary. Very, very scary. Not good at all. Oh dear. Not good morning. Come for another. No, wholesome. Wholesome. Yes. Wholesome. Yes. Thank you for correcting yourself there. Wholesome. Uh, which way round are the legs? I did do a doodle of this. They are a big one at the back. Good. That's what I thought. I thought it was big at the back. Oh dear. Welcome on in though. I hope you're doing well. We are actually. We are legitimately doing a wholesome one today, uh, Nut. Like today, I'm not even like joking with you we are actually legitimately making a very wholesome embroidery today um because the prompt was filbert the fluffiest dinosaur that is the prompt we had for today so funnily enough it's actually like it's actually kind of a wholesome embroidery day weirdly crazy right yeah but it does happen 
And so here he is. We're just outlining him at the moment, getting him with his nice, uh, nice thick outline. I want to pull that back a little bit, but we'll we'll do that in a second. I also want some tea. It's very happy. Oh yeah, I don't sting. You have the last phobia to swim and swim. Oh. Did you get stung, Luna? Because that's a very scary, very dangerous to get stung out in the water. Even if it's not like a really bad jellyfish, because it can shock you to the point where you can struggle to swim. Oh, you got stung, but it wasn't too bad. Oh, I'm glad it wasn't too bad, at least go. Heck. Thank you, yeah, no, it, we're very early stages right now, but this is, he's gonna be tucked up in bed. Oh, my legs on the way back out, Woo! Yeah, it's like super, super, super dangerous because it can send you into shock. And like, obviously being in shock, even again, even if it's not a deadly sting, having a pain you're not expecting and not knowing why, because that's the other thing. If you don't see the jellyfish, a lot of people get stung and they don't, they don't realize what's happening and it can, it can put you into shock and then it's super dangerous, super, super dangerous because you don't want to be in shock when you're swimming. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be in shock at any point, but you definitely don't want to be in shock when you're swimming. <laughs> oh dear, I just hope that you float, yeah. Oh dear. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, people probably do get stuck in the shallows as well. I guess I'm more used to seeing them out a little bit further, but no, actually saying that, we do get mo moon jellyfish on the coast regularly, but I always feel really bad for them because they're always like washing up on shore and it's like, that's not where you live. You don't survive on the shore. Oh dear. I have thrown a great many moon jellyfish back into the ocean. <laughs> like, get back in there. This is not where you survive. Also, H, welcome on in. Thank you so much for the follow. I hope you're doing well. We are taking part in Chromacore, which is a daily art challenge. And today's prompt was, <laughs> Philbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. But I have the rest of the prompt stuff behind me at the moment, which you can see in the big camera there. They all are, they're blurry and in the background, but I have been doing them daily. Oh dear. My dad helped me because I was screaming. Yeah, I would be screaming too. Listen, I love jellyfish. I love them to pieces. I have massive jellyfish tattoos. Ugh, I want more jellyfish tattoos. I have the name jellyfish. Like, I, I love jellyfish. I really, really, really do. I would scream. <laughs> I would I would scream the house down if I got stung by a jellyfish. Like, I would scream, I would panic, I would yell, I would likely over-exaggerate the pain unless it was really bad because that is something that I tend to do. Uh, but yeah, no, you, I would not be there like, oh, it's a jellyfish and they love jellyfish, so I guess I'll be quiet. Nah, I'd be, I'd be screaming the house down. <laughs> oh dear. Although actually probably not in the water because I'm not such a, a I, I'm not a bad swimmer. I can definitely swim in the ocean. But like, if I, if I knew I needed to imminently get back to shore, I probably would wait until I got onto shore and then start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a little embarrassing. I do have a pretty good like uh, like pretty calm under pressure in dangerous situations kind of mentality. But once the danger is passed, oh that's not a knot I can undo. Once the danger is passed, I go straight into a uh, crying like a baby mode. <laughs> oh dear. There are many times where like like again I had a I I I, I sailed from the sea back to the shore with a full on concussion and a broken orbital. Like, I'd done that, and it wasn't until someone asked me what had happened that I started crying. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very good when I know that I need to do something to like, actually, like I'm actually in a bad situation. I'm pretty good like that. Until, until I know that I'm safe, and then I'm a mess. <laughs> But I do think that's relatively normal, right? Like adrenaline will take over and you you just like, you do what you have to do to to get back safely. And then once the adrenaline is done, like once you realize that you're safe and it kind of sinks in that something really hurts, then you're like, ah! But yeah, I have, I have, uh, I, I, I'm that kind of person. So I will cry, I'm, I'm a crier. I will absolutely cry if I'm in pain. Uh, <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit I will cry, but only when I know that I'm safe. <laughs> I will wait. I will wait. How do you break your heart? Oh, um, 
single person boats. Um, I was I was planning to come back to shore pretty soon anyway because there was a storm coming in so like the waves were getting pretty high and the wind was going. In small boats the boom of the ship which is where the uh, where the sails attached to they will swing very quickly if the wind is high like you generally will have a hold of them but they they can go move very quickly and i was only about 14 years old so when the storm was hitting and i was trying to get back to shore um the wind caught my sail and before i could stop it it smashed into the side of my head uh, and that's a big metal rod at high velocity so it hit me across there uh, and so it cracked my orbital it went up to my nose i had like a black eye like half the size of my head yeah it was it was a it, it's a pretty common injury but it's like you still need to be really careful because it's on your head so or orbitals are like on your head i think one of the easiest things to break um, like we were, we were more concerned about the concussion than we were like anything else because it, it's a head injuries look really, really bad, but um, a lot of the time they're not as bad as they can appear. That one we didn't realize how bad it was until the swelling went down a bit because you could actually see a shadow under my skin because I hadn't broken skin. You could see a shadow under my skin, and that you could see where my bone wasn't anymore. <laughs> It was it was a very interesting healing process, but it's back now like you wouldn't notice I mean, maybe you would a little bit but like not really like you wouldn't notice anything I've had a few head injuries, so I think it'd be difficult to pinpoint that one amongst the ocean of uh, Head injuries that I've had <laughs> uh, dear. But yeah, I, I sailed myself back to shore like that But then as soon as someone like because they could see me coming like so people, people were like, right, we need to, we need first aid and stuff like that when I got back in. And I was immediately taken up to a tent, like that a lot of people would congregate under, um, where I was looked at properly. And that's when I cried when I got to the tent. <laughs> I think, I think I was in shock until then, because I was like, wow, that really happened. Uh, but yeah, I got to the tent and they were like, all right, how does it feel? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, that's fine. I survived. I also start crying after deadly fist stings. It's all my like, my ass if I was okay. Yeah. Oh dear. Like when somebody asks you if you're okay, and it's like, actually, you know what? I'm not okay. <laughs> like I'll be fine, but I'm not okay. <laughs> Good under pressure, but I don't uh, get the cries. So I consider your jump to action more impressive. Oh, I uh, I have. There's been a few times uh, where something similar has happened where like I feel like I've had to act very very quickly and it's not until afterwards like after the situation like there was again I was about I would have been 13 years old when this one happens because it was when I was still doing a paper round I definitely told this story before uh, I am very 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 lucky uh, the school that I went to first aid uh, like basic first aid and getting your first aid certificate is a part of the curriculum so unless you opt out of it you will learn first aid so like a little bit of background about that I was already first aid trained when all of this happened so I was very much like I kind of knew what to look for and what to do basically I knew to call an ambulance you know if something bad happened so I was doing my paper round and it was really really icy and we were wandering around and I heard behind me like a whoop whack. And I was like, oh, weird noise what I turned around. Um, and an older lady, I think she was in her 80s because we did actually chat afterwards. She was fine um, afterwards, uh, had fallen and smacked her head on a brick wall. So her head was just boof. She'd also broken her arm, both of her wrists and she couldn't stand up and I was the only person there and I was 13 <laughs> and so I ran over I I saw a lot of blood <laughs> I was like oh wait what do you do um so she mentioned her husband was nearby we called an ambulance I found her husband in the garden and then husband took over the ambulance call because he knew more about her I ran so you have to bear in mind there was like ice and snow on the floor she was sat in it bleeding <laughs> um so i ran and grabbed some towels and some like fluffy things and just was like wrap her in that don't move let me just cover you in warmer things because you can't just sit in snow <laughs> until like an hour later an ambulance is going to get here while you're bleeding 
Uh, and then I stayed there um, because he had to stay on the phone. I stayed there until the ambulance got there with her. And when I got home, my parents were like, home a bit late from your paper run, are you okay? And I was like, ah! <laughs> and that wasn't even me. I was just, like, I wasn't even, even in any pain. I was just like, what? Cause, Cause like, you, you never expect to see something like that, like happen in front of you, let alone be the only person there. And I was like, I, th I think even though I wasn't the person like who was injured and again I was very she was good she she was in hospital for a while but when she came back she actually wrote a letter to my employer letting me know that she was all right uh, because she wasn't going to be able to leave the house for a while or something and so she she wrote a letter to the employer being like heads up one of your paper girls uh, like full-on saved my life the other day uh, where I like had smashed my head open and broken my arm and both wrists or something ridiculous. I guess when you're older, things do break easier, but it was like, there was a lot of things bent in directions where you were like, and then blood, and then, yeah, it was, it was, it was something. And I think it wasn't until I got home that it really sunk in what had happened. And I, I got home, my parents were like, oh my God, what happened? And I was just like, I was really stressed out. <laughs> Like, I don't know what to say. I was really, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but again, it, I can only laugh about it now because everything ended up being fine and she was okay. And uh, she would always come out and see me after that. Like while I did my paper round, she would, she would always come out and say hi when she could. So yes, it was, it, it, I can only laugh about it now because it turned out okay. And again, I was very, very fortunate that my school taught me a lot about head injuries and like you don't move the person you ask them you, know, you try and keep them talking uh, make sure they don't go to sleep um do what you can to make them comfortable where they are rather than moving them around um so yeah i was i was very lucky that i did have like a basic first aid training at that point because otherwise i think i would have just panicked <laughs> um so yes props to my school honestly because i think i must have learned first aid like less than a year before that happened it was really close uh so yes good stuff i mean i'm also lucky that i would have had known some basic first aid anyway because i do have a lot of family in the medical field but yeah I, for like being hands-on and knowing that someone is in a really dangerous position right in front of you and again she was elderly sat in the snow vulnerable person <laughs> Um, I'm genuinely surprised though, because it was quite a loud noise when she went over that none of the neighbors came out. Um, I was almost tempted to go and try and grab a neighbor or something like that so that it wasn't just 13 year old me before we found her husband. But yeah, it was, <sighs> no, one, no one else came out. <laughs> like, it was like a relative, I guess you wouldn't assume that's what had happened, but yeah. Oh dear. I'm no use in emergency, needles and turtles off make me faint, been that way ever since I was a child. I'm not too bad on gore, um, but I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a doctor. My first response, always run away. Yeah, we, we'd seen another pretty bad injury at one point, which honestly, he was in a bad way, but he wasn't, he refused to sit still. <laughs> and so we were like, don't worry, we'll help you with this. Just stay still. Cause it was the guy that came off a, a motorbike in front of us. Guy like pulled out and the motorbike was going like 60 and he went Pew! and he flew about, I want to say like close to 10 meters away from the impact site. Um, and then he stood up and it's like, I'm glad he stood up because it meant that I knew that he hadn't like immediately died. But then you had to be like, you need to, you need to go sit down off the road and we need to get you an ambulance. <laughs> you need to stop trying to, cause he was trying to collect the bits of his bike off the road and it was like, no. And we already knew that he'd probably hurt his leg cause he couldn't walk on it very well. But like, you just don't know how bad the injury is when they're wearing that much. Cause luckily he was wearing a helmet and armor and stuff. And I honestly, probably that's what saved his life. But um, you just don't know. You don't know how bad it is. Like stay still and let us, let us go grab your stuff for you. Like we can do that. Um, you sit, sit there and talk. <laughs> oh my God. But again, the fact that he moved meant that we, we knew that he was alive, which was nice but also he needed to stop. <laughs> we also found out that he was all right, thankfully. Oh dear. 
So in that situation, first aid training means you know what to do, uh, so that takes over. But when you do first aid work, they warn you that you may send someone off in the ambulance, you may still need to go home alone yourself, depending on how you process it. Yeah, like I didn't do the rest of my paper around that day. I went home. I just dragged my papers with me and my parents helped me with it another day. Cause I was like, I was just so shook. Like I, I, I don't, it, I was just terrified. And I like, you, you, you don't know, like, did I do the right thing? Did I help as much as I could have? Like, was there something I missed? At the very least, I knew that they were with professionals, which is like getting them to an actual, actual doctor is like, was I guess first priority. And I think it probably should always be first priority, but yeah, like, you, you know, I, I went home, like, and all I could think about was like, should I have done more? Was there something like I missed? Did I do something wrong? And like, I, I know that I'm not built to be a nurse or a doctor. Like, I, I have way too much, like, of the self-doubt kind of stuff for that. But yeah, you like, you really do. It, it sticks with you. I mean, obviously it has. I remember it vividly to this day. <laughs> and I've only ever had to do that sort of stuff twice. And I remember it both times vividly. But I know I know I couldn't be a doctor. Big respect to people that can do that, honestly, day in and day out. Because I, I, I just know I couldn't. I just know I couldn't. Because every time that I've been in a stressful situation where it's felt like I've had to help someone medically and I, there hasn't been a choice, it's just been me or just been me and a couple of friends. We've done it. We've done our best. But it's, 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 a, it's a very, very horrible experience. <laughs> like, it's very stressful. It's very worrying. Um, the other thing as well, like, you don't always have, like, I'm very lucky that both times, the first time because they got in contact with us, the second time was because the police got in contact with us. So both times I knew the person was okay. Um, the, we had to be witnesses because obviously a hit and run, you know, we were there. Um, but um, yeah, we were very, very lucky that both times we were made aware that the person was okay. But like a lot of the time you send people off and you just don't know. Like you don't, you'll, you might never know what happens to them after that. Um, and, and that's also a very, very stressful experience. I know when I continued doing the paper round for a week or two after that, I would always look at the house and hope that I'd see her there. Cause like, I didn't know at that stage that she was okay. And she was just chilling in hospital like while she recovered. I didn't know that. So I would be like peering in their windows as I delivered their newspaper being like, are they all right? Did, did, they, did, they, did they end up being okay? I hope so. It very much, I, I don't have the mentality of, I, I, I'm very impressed with all the doctors and nurses who do do that every single day. Like I, I, I couldn't, I know that I couldn't. I'd stress out way, way too much about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't last. But I'm very grateful for the people that can do it and take over and, and look after people properly. Very, very grateful. Very impressive people. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Did call an ambulance someone that fell on their face another time the fire service for someone's help. You, oh my God. I, so technically I have seen a building burning, but I didn't realize I thought it was a bonfire that just got a bit like intense. And it was only the next day that I realized that a house nearby had burned down. I, I've never actually seen like firsthand a building on fire. And I think that would be a very scary sight, to be honest. I think, I think that's another thing that would probably just stick with me in a bad way where it's like, oh my God, terrifying. Shock and adrenaline, oh, 100%. Like absolutely, like I, I know that both, especially the first time when I was a bit younger, because I was an adult when I saw the stuff with the bike. Uh, I know that there was a hundred percent adrenaline was the only thing that was like, it, like I went into complete autopilot mode with the first aid training that I knew. It was entirely adrenaline, and I think that's why I had like such an intense response after like when I finally got home because it was like, oh, and it's done, and I, you know, it is done. I'm out. Yeah, adrenaline, adrenaline and shock are one hell of a drug. <laughs> and they can be quite useful. They can, they can be, you know, but not always. Oh dear. No, big mad respect for people that do it as a job. I don't think I could. I think you have to have like a certain kind of mentality. And like, I love the, I love the idea of being able to help people. And like, when I've spoken to people that I know who do like doctor and nurses and stuff like that, the main reason they decided to become doctors and nurses was because they wanted to help people. And I get that feeling. It'd be lovely to be able to help people, but I do think you have to have a pretty strong mentality going into it. And I do think, okay, sorry, random, random tangent. I think there really should be more mental health uh, stuff available to people that work in like a &E's, uh, hospitals, emergency response, all of that kind of stuff. Because I can only assume that over time, that kind of pressure must really build up. Like, they're human too, right? Ugh. 
I remember hearing about uh, ambulance workers and like that for an ambulance worker, they see some of the most gory, scary, horrible situations, some of the most death, um, you know, of any any job. Okay, it's a very, very traumatic job. I think A&E drivers and A&E workers have a higher PTSD level than soldiers, like just based on some of the awful, awful things they see on the daily. And the most that a lot of them get is half an hour to breathe and then they go back to work. And that's it. There's no like long-term help for them, even though it's very much recognized that it's a job that leaves you with a lot of mental scarring. There's not like a huge, huge amount that you get. And it's like, I, that's, I mean, I'll be honest. I think at that point, that's pretty unacceptable. It's very well known how, how hard those jobs are on you mentally. Like, and I don't think there's any reason that there shouldn't be that support at this point. Oh dear. We need to have stiff people in the UK and most countries are being financially responsible for anyone who tried to help. Yes, true. Like when we call an ambulance, we don't have to worry about paying for it. Like I, when you see someone have an incident, you can call an ambulance without having to worry about, yeah, like can this person afford an ambulance? Could I afford an ambulance for them? Like there's none of that. It's uh, which is, which is yes, very much a good thing. We are very lucky in the UK that that's how our health system is, that it is based on helping people and not on profits. Yeah. We're, ve we're very fortunate. I, I cannot, yeah, cannot ignore that. Thank you, thank you for mentioning. That's very true. So yeah, funny enough, 13 year old me doing their paper round. Probably couldn't afford an ambulance. <laughs> Probably couldn't afford that if I had to pay for it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe like 13 year old me had randomly thousands of pounds, but no, no, funny enough, they didn't. Oh dear. Two houses nearly caught out. Luckily, both of them put out in time and still standing. Hey, nice! Uh, it's difficult to treat the first aid of for shock, too. Yeah, it's also difficult that you actually say like to. I, at the time, and I think a lot of it did come down to me being a little bit spooked, a little bit shocked. I knew that it was quite a bad injury, but I didn't quite realize how bad it was until she wrote to us and explained exactly what had happened. Cause like, I knew she had a head, in head injury and I definitely knew something was wrong with her arm, but it was very difficult to tell. And again, I, I knew first aid, but I don't know intense medical stuff. Like, I don't know what, what, what's broken and what, I've never, I've never seen a broken arm before. I didn't know what that was. Um, so I knew that there were, like where there were injuries, but I didn't quite know the, the extent of the injuries until I got a letter being like, this lady very much thinks that you saved her life. Do you mind if, you know, we send you the letter? And it's like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to. And thank you for letting me know that she's okay. Also, I appreciate that because I was very, not, very, very anxious about that. Yeah, so she uh, she sent us that letter explaining exactly like what happened. And yeah, no, it, it, was, <laughs> it was a lot worse than like, I had initially thought. I knew it was bad and I knew because she was elderly, like it was, it was a high risk. But I didn't realize how bad it was because I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I don't know. Oh dear. But I knew her being in the cold wasn't good and I knew that she shouldn't move her head too much. And I knew to keep her talking. So I knew the basics. Yeah, like I don't know, I don't know what kind of injury she had. Also, he has a little outline now. He's getting there and he looks ploofy. Looks nice and ploofy. Oh dear. Sometimes they call out to a situation in danger because the patient is aggressive because the perp is a crime. Oh yeah, that's also scary. I got a concussion on a ski trip with my school. I was almost down the track and the cabin was close by. I was told to lay there and do nothing by my teacher, but no one spoke to me and they hit me every time I was close to falling asleep. Yeah, like normally my experience with it is people will keep you talking. Uh, like I have had bad head injuries, but I've also witnessed bad head injuries a fair few times. And like one of the first things people do is that like keep talking. They just keep you talking uh, and they'll ask you questions. You would do have to stay still. Like I remember that one. I've always had to stay still. I've watched other people have to stay still, but they'll ask you questions and they'll, they'll ask you like normally like not anything to do with you being injured stuff. Like what are you studying at school? And like, you know, what's your pastime? Do you have any hobbies? And they'll just be like, just keep talking uh, just to make sure that they're not falling asleep. Uh, and that they're breathing and everything like that. That's like one of the first ones I've seen. Like you just keep talking and you definitely don't fall asleep. Uh, even if you feel tired, don't let them fall asleep. <laughs> Whatever you do, no sleeping allowed. <laughs> All right, 
Do we want to do his patches next, or do we want to like outline some other things first? We should probably do our outlining, shouldn't we? We should be probably be good beans. I do want to use black on the eyes, but I might actually use beads for the little eyes and then little black mouth, maybe. Maybe maybe I'll do it like that. Last week, I to talk with me after a while. Good. Hell yeah. I'm a carer. Forget work. I'm okay, I forget work and some things, uh, because every day it's easy to forget when it, that it can be life or death. Yeah, I, I, again, do not work in that field. Never have. Never really wanted to either. Uh, can't work, I, I, I am just, it, it affect, I know it affects me too much. It's affected me every single time and I wouldn't last, like, at all. I do think you need to be able to, like, barricade yourself off a little bit with those kind of jobs not in like a rude way or like a mean way but just to like protect yourself a little bit and i just i'm not very good at that uh never have been probably never will be and so i take it very very personal <laughs> and i can do it with retail but seeing people get injured or hurt or not knowing what happens to them really really sticks with me <laughs> Um, again, I'm very, very lucky that both times where I've been in that situation, they've let me know. But um, yeah, I, I know that like in a situation where someone goes to another ward and you maybe never see them again, I just, it would sit with me. I know it would. Falling uh, to the ground is dangerous, Chip to, ooh, a rib ice skating. Oh dear. Like a very hard punch to the chest, yeah. Uh, falling on, well, ice is really hard. Like, obviously it's slippery, but if you fall on it, that, that's a hard surface. And it's a hard, flat surface as well. Not much to, to soften the fall. Compartmentalization is essential in such jobs, yeah. And I, I don't think... Like, I, that's not something that I'll, I don't think I'll ever be... Well, I'd have to really practice to get good at it. But I'm a very much like... Again, it really is only to do so much with injuries. I don't really feel it too much in the rest of my life, which I guess is a good thing. But... When it when it comes to people getting hurt, I I very much struggle to turn brain off and not think about it, and I'm normally stuck thinking about it for quite a while afterwards. And yes, it makes it <laughs> I, it means I think that a job like working, I find it very impressive that people can do it, but I don't think that I would ever be very suitable for working at a place like a accident and emergency ward or as a first responder or anything like that. I don't. I just don't think I have the mentality or skills to do so. <laughs> well, definitely not the skills, because I haven't had the training, but like the mentality, I guess, is more what I'm thinking of. The mental fortitude to do such a, a difficult job. Yeah. Ah, oh, dear. Track was full of holes and ice that day, and they apologized to me. Hell yeah, as they should. Well, yeah, as they should, but also <laughs> at that point, damage is kind of done. Like, you've had the injury. I don't know. But I guess it's better than nothing. Better than nothing, but still? Okay. Also, once again, I'm sorry, we've been chatting so much that I haven't really mentioned it. I'm avoiding uh, any outlining in black. The only black will probably be on the face just so that it pops out from the rest of the design. But yes, we're avoiding black at the moment just because I'm running out of black. And so until more black thread comes, I'm just gonna stick with more lighter colors. And also I do think it fits the theme of this is like soft colors. Uh, lots of pastels and stuff like that. I think it fits the theme well, but predominantly it's not because it fits the theme that we're doing it, it's actually just because I am running out of thread. <laughs> but but if anyone asks, we're doing it because it fits the theme, okay? Back me up there. It's definitely because it fits the theme and definitely not because I am a little low on black thread right now. <laughs> and if anyone snitches on me... Yeah. Oh, thank you for the hydrate! I do need to hydrate, you're right. And they should have taken it before they opened the track, and they took my yelling as a channel. <laughs> Did we use black thread? No, I didn't use any black thread on the inverse one, actually. That's just black fabric in the background. It's all of the outlining. Because on, like, all of the portraits and, like, a lot of the more detailed bits, they're all outlined in black, just so that I can properly see where I'm filling it in. It's also kind of like the art style that I enjoy doing, is, like, the thicker black outlines. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's there, and that's the reason that I'm running out of black, is because I'm using in all of them. <laughs> and, oh dear. I mean, it's fine, because it means that I like the art pieces that I'm making, so it's, it's definitely worth it, but yeah, it just means that uh, I'm a little low on black right now. I have a little bit left, but I want to save that for tomorrow in case I need Like, my thought process is, if I can get away with not using black 
today, it means that if I have to use it tomorrow, I can. And then tomorrow, if I can get away with not using black, well, then I have a little bit extra for the day after. So that's kind of how I'm treating it, is if I can get away with not using it, I won't. To be fair though, with, again, a prompt like this, I think it works quite well because it's just, uh, it is more of an artistic choice. Oh, it is an artistic choice. Yes, 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 yes. I really like the inverse. I, I, it's definitely grown on me. The only bit I really don't like is the spaghetti. Have I shown you guys the inverse? I think you've seen the picture online. Have I shown it to you in person? I can't remember. I can grab it if I haven't. Because I do want you guys to see it without like a... Because, how to put it? Because it's 3D art, it looks different when it's not a still image of it, if that makes sense. Like, it's not that I've edited the photo or anything like that, but it's just that still images don't quite fully capture, I think, 3D as well. Oh, I have to go! No, you're fine! I to... Hell yeah! Thank you, Handy! Take care of yourself! Enjoy the rest of your day! I hope that it goes really well. Have a lovely Sunday. You don't think so. I can go grab it for you. Let me finish this thread, because I'm, I'm pretty close to finishing it. And then, uh, and then I'll go grab it, in case I haven't. I mean, if I have, it just means I show it to you twice, right? That's not, not the end of the world. <laughs> I'm sure you'll live. Go. And... Oh! Is it decided that that's where the thread's ending for now? Okay, I can grab some more in a sec. <sighs> Two seconds. Let me go grab it off the, off the board. Actually, I might be able to just... Oh, no, I'll stand up. I might be able to sit down and grab it. There you go. It's gonna look very different to the one we're currently working on. This is how it ended up looking. It's got like a lovely sparkle to it at the bottom, but only one of them is deciding to catch the light right now, but they all kind of do glisten a little bit. And uh, yeah, I, I like it. I don't love it. I mainly don't like that bit, to be honest. The rest of it's okay. But yeah, the black is just fabric. It's, uh, it's not thread, so I didn't use too much of it on that. I did use quite a bit of white, but no black. No black. There we go. Take care, Handy! I hope the rest of your day goes really well. Right, I'm gonna... Do this. Do the blank case you lose the button. True, yeah, maybe I need to repair something. Also, I don't think I ever said so. Scott, I hope you've had a good weekend. Good morning. Sorry, I'm getting a bit behind on my, on my good mornings. <laughs> getting too distracted by Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. Yeah, I was considering crocheting a plushie for this. I was like, I maybe, but I kind of... Just for, there's something about, I think, having a lot of artworks that look good next to each other. So I figured I wouldn't do that just because I wanted like a consistency with my art with this competition so that when I look back, I can be like, that's all the art that I made for Chroma. So I did consider crocheting a little plushie, but I chose against it. Not because I dislike the idea of crocheting a plushie, but mainly just for like, it all looking cohesive at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Philbo the Fluffy, yeah, Philbo the Fluffy. I have actually got the beads that spell out the name Philbert that we're gonna put on it later because I want everyone to know that his name is Philbert. I think it's a beautiful name. I think everyone deserves to know. Uh, so that'll be a nice touch that we can add a little bit later that I'm excited about. And getting a couple of extra stitches in here. Go. And. Go. Like so. Nice. And then we'll keep stitching across, get the other side attached nice and neatly. And then he'll have his second little blanket. Because he had, you know, he has like a blanket fort for a bed. He needs multiple blankets. Very important for Philbert. Philbert, very important. Uh, did Jelly, I want to say thank you. I thought the pick they chose to showcase was brilliant. Uh, oh, really? Okay, I think they chose that one because it impressed them more. I wonder if that's the case as well. I'm a little sad because it doesn't have any of the lighting effects on it that I really enjoy doing. But at the end of the day, I, I also shouldn't complain too much because at the end of the day, I got picked for standouts and I, I do appreciate that. I am thinking at some point, um, I might do an extra hoop. So, do you remember the person who done the animation for us? I might just make some fan art of their character back for them because I do really appreciate that they went to all of the effort of doing that animation. I think it's really, really cool. So, at some point, if we do a hoop that takes a little bit less long, I might uh, might go back and do that one. Yes, because 
I just, I don't know, they just, they made such a lovely piece of art for us and I just kind of want to, I just kind of want to, they, they don't, I don't have to, it wasn't, it wasn't made with the idea that I'd make them anything in return, I guess, but I kind of want to make something for them in return because it was a really, really nice piece and I, I have never had, uh, have I ever had, I've had fan art of, I think, the jelly, which is really, really nice. I've never had anyone make a full-on animation of any of my OCs. That is, that is very new uh, and very, very sweet. And I don't think that you'd ever expect that because that's so much goddamn work. But yeah, really, really nice of them. And I thought I'd do that. What's that, like, the uh, biggest tweet you've ever done? The thing is, so here's the thing, uh, Scott. Big hoops kind of suck. And the reason is they don't hold the tension of the fabric as well, which means the bigger the hoop, the less tension there is in the fabric and the less fun it is to stitch. I have used some relatively big hoops before, but I never recommend them. Unless you're like doing a challenge or something like that where you're using a bigger hoop, you'll generally, I think, have less of a fun time the bigger the hoop that you use. And it's better to just use a small hoop and move around the project. Like the hoop that I'm using right now, this is about the biggest hoop that I would use for like without moving the hoop around. Because once you start getting bigger than that, I think that's when it starts becoming less fun. And that's when, yeah, like the tension starts disappearing. It won't make a thwack sound. And also your needle will be getting stuck a lot. So you'll constantly be fighting with your fabric, which is just not very fun. <laughs> At least for me, that is not a very relaxing way of doing embroidery. So. Technically, I have done larger pieces of embroidery, but I've used a small hoop and I've just moved around an awful lot. And yes, that that's, there you go. That's my input on, <laughs> on using a large embroidery hoop. It's not very fun. I wouldn't normally recommend it. Oh dear. Sorry for the not very exciting answer actually thinking about it. That's probably not what you wanted to hear. My bad. You know, you get into a mode where you're like, I have opinions on this, <laughs> but they're not very exciting opinions and they're incredibly practical. My bad. The animation was amazing. It was. It was an amazing animation. So I thought it'd be nice to make some fan art of their character back for them. But I don't know what day I'll have enough time to do two hoops. So we'll see. I'm kind of just going to wait for a prompt that comes up where I know that I can do two in a day. Because this is quite a big hoop. So even though we're doing less embroidery, it's still going to take a while. Because <laughs> it's a big hoop. <laughs> right, there we go. We've got a... Got our pink blanket in there now. We should probably do... Do I want to do these ones in the same pink? Hmm. There's a part of me that kind of does. Also, my music. My music. Where is it? There you go. Come back here. That's an awesome tip. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, we've literally been doing that with the, the other costume. But yeah, normally, small hoop. I'm just wiggle it around a lot. Like, move from space to space. And then you get good tension and good thwack noise. Everyone loves a good thwack noise. <laughs> also, look at his little, look at his little, his little bean tucked in bed. Very hacking cute. Hello, who is a little chap? His name is Philbert, and he is the fluffiest dinosaur. And this is a prompt. <laughs> this is the prompt that we've had today. It's the prompt for the fourth day of Chroma. It was make Philbert the fluffiest dinosaur. And that's it. You can make him any dinosaur you want. You can make him real. I've made him a plushie. But yep, yeah, he is Philbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. What a good prompt. What a what a 10 out of 10 art prompt. Who could not be inspired by a god a god tier prompt that is Philbert the fluffiest dinosaur. So I wanted to do something a little bit special and use some different fabrics and stuff like that so that he is actually fluffy. He's soft. He is a soft bean and I'm very keen. Oh dear. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? It's pretty cool. So we're making him like a little bedroom. <laughs> so this is his bed. This is the two pillows. He's got these little like cushions around it as well. And then he's got like two blankets so that he's extra warm. I don't know if you guys had this, but whenever I stayed with my grandparents, they'd always give you like five layers of blankets. And I kind of wanted to go for that vibe. Like the, the vibe that your grandparents have given you five layers of blankets to sleep under for some reason that, you know, I, I just cannot quite fathom, but I do, you know what, the effort is appreciated in it, and I did like it. And that's kind of, that's, there you go, that's the inspiration for this embroidery. It's when your grandparents give you like five blankets and like ten pillows. 
<laughs> you have like a little blanket fort without even trying. But with Filbert. Filbert is the little guy that's all tucked away. Yeah, I want to make these like little, uh, little like Swiss rolls. I'm gonna do like a swirl going around them. Why am I molting so much today? I literally have my hair tied up. What have I done? <laughs> what have I done? I've done something that has upset my hair and it's decided it's all going to fall out today. Maybe it's the wind. I was out in the wind yesterday. Maybe I got winded too hard. And now my hair's gonna fall out. <laughs> there we go. By the way, if you hadn't gathered, circles at this scale in embroidery are really not super easy and kind of take a lot of backwards and forwards to get like a good round shape. Uh, for some reason, I've decided that all of the shapes that I'm making today are round, uh, which does mean this process is a little bit harder than usual. I prefer with embroidery, and I think a lot of people do, like more harsh, sharp lines because they're a little bit easier to do. Uh, but yeah, for some reason, something struck me today where I was like, you know what I want to do? Uh, circles in embroidery. And I don't know why, that was a silly decision, but it's okay. We're gonna live with it because I've, I've done it now and it's a bit late. I've already stuck the things down. Go. And just around there. Circles are cute. Circles are cute, actually. You're not wrong. Go. I did also like kind of purposefully pick some fabrics that don't fray as quickly. It's not that they don't fray at all, like that would be overselling it, but they don't fray quite as quickly as some of the fabrics I have been using, so that I don't have to worry about dealing with that as I'm sewing, because that would also be a struggle. Okay, get that around there. We used blankets and oilskin jackets to keep warm as a kid, so heavy and I felt attached to the bed. Yeah, I also remember waking up feeling like, uh, like feeling like you had a weighted blanket on you, but it's just layers upon layers upon layers. But I guess that's kind of a nostalgic feeling now. Like, you know, it, I smile thinking about the times where I'd wake up in their house as a kid, like, uh, heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. Ah oh dear. Circles are cute. Hell yeah, circles are cute. Right, but I do want to have like a Swiss roll, so I want to have like a circle going through the center of it as well, which I'm going to probably draw in before I do it, because otherwise I think it'll be a bit hard to judge by eye. Probably not impossible, but harder than what I want to do today. I want to do easy stuff. <laughs> it's fil filbert's meant to be relatively easy embroidery. Yeah, just get that in there. So I'm just like joining up to the edge of the hoop now. Oh, thanks for the egg smash. Very nice. Oh, look, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. We are doing uh, the prompt for the day, which is Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. Here he is. Here is Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. All right, if I grab this and I'm just gonna do like a little swirly whirly in the center, there you go. That's what I want. A little swirly whirly. I'm not a fan of fabric that frays you look at them. Yeah, honestly, Mateus, all of the fabrics frayed. As soon as you like looked at it, like you gave it a dirty look and it would be like, oh, it would playing like that, are we? And then it would start fraying and it's like, I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God, I just need you. I just need you to not do this for two seconds so that I can work with you. But yeah, I'm so used to working with fabric that frays as soon as you look at it. Uh, it's kind of nice to work with a fabric that's not doing that to me today. I am enjoying it. Thank you so much, fabric. Uh, I very much appreciate your cooperation on my Phil But The Fluffiest Dinosaur work. Very important work, by the way. Very, very important work. You know, the amount of, of benefit the world will have having seen Phil But The Fluffiest Dinosaur. Which, by the way, you'll see Phil But The Fluffiest Dinosaur like a hundred times because everyone's going to be doing Phil but the fluffiest dinosaur because that's the daily prompt so if you're not already in the chroma core discord and you want to see a lot of fluffy dinosaurs i mean it's gonna be a lot of fluffy dinosaurs today i can't say all of them are gonna be as cute as my Phil, but because i think some people will do some weird stuff with it you know the inverted forest prompt some people made forest out of human flesh 
and they like had hanging bodies as trees and stuff. So like, there are some interesting people in this Discord. Actually, I think a lot of you would like that. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, I feel like a lot of people in this community actually might really gel with that. I thought it was very creative. Oh dear. Call of Duty released possibly the greatest pack. Oh really? A skin called said pss, 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 and says sprinkles in a stick and says to sprinkles reported with duty and a stick is called Operation Toe Beans. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. I had a family like this one that was frying just by being folded on the table. Yeah, we did. Uh, I'm going to mispronounce it because I always mispronounce it and that's how we're living here. But lame? Lame was actually incredibly lame to sew with. Also, living up to its name, or at least its spelling of lame, because it was not very fun to sew with and the majority of Mateus was made out of lame. And I just, it, was, it was awful. Uh, sounds very creative. Yeah, there are a creative bunch in there. There we go. We've got a little, our little swirly pillow. Very cute. One. I have two more. No, three more swirly pillows to do. Oh dear. How often do you poke the needle through the wrong side? Oh, you mean like, like you do this and you accidentally go over? Not so much with embroidery hoops, but a lot on cosplay. So I, I think the hoop kind of keeps me on the correct side most of the time. But when I'm doing cosplay, if I'm just like doing stuff, I'm not using a hoop. Yeah, then it happens more. So not not so much with this, but with other things, 100%. <laughs> oh dear. Lame, perhaps pronounce lambe, lambe maybe, but no, I will always pronounce it lame. And the reason is because it is a nightmare to sew with. Like, absolute nightmare fuel. It's horrible. Wouldn't recommend it. And so I know it's not pronounced lame, but I think it deserves to be pronounced lame. Oh, la, 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 me, la, me, lame. <laughs> it's lame. It's lame. It sucks to sew with. It's cheap. And that is literally like the only good thing about it. And yeah, no, no. It's, it's absolutely lame. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It's, it's, just, it's just lame. But it is cheap. It is cheap. Which is why I ended up using it. because it does, And it does give a nice metallic look. Listen, I, there are some positive things about it, but they are few and far between. And for the most part, it is just lame. <laughs> oh. There we go. Getting all of these bits outlined. It's very cute. It's just a nice cute one. I'm happy. I'm happy with my nice cute vibes. Hell yeah. Cute heckin' dinosaur in the bedroom kind of vibes. Does anyone else have the book that was Henry in the Bucket Full of Dinosaurs? Because that was one of my favourite books when I was a kid. I, then I also wanted to be a paleontologist for a long time. A little, not something that I want to do again. Same. Also, Ledman, good morning. Thank you for the hydrate. I will hydrate. Welcome on in. The prompt today was uh, Philbert. <laughs> and see you, sir. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to our Philbert, the fluffiest dinosaur embroidery. Um, so we're doing him as a plushie in like a bed setup, and the the inspiration is like wow. when your grandparents put a thousand blankets on you before you go to bed, <laughs> and it just creates a fort. Wow. Yeah, wow. thank you for the party and the hi, fuck. I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. We like to party. We like we like to party. We like to party. We like we like to party. We like to party. We like we like to party. We like to party. Psh! Love bang up our sister And every puppy's jumping New York to San Francisco An interstate from disco The wheels are still on turn And traffic lights are burning So if you like to party Come on and move your body Bam 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 so I'm just getting the swirl in because I knew that I could jump to the swirl and it wouldn't take as much of my thread Thank you for the party! Haven't read the book but would watch the cartoon Oh, was there a cartoon for it? I, so I only had the books. I, I didn't realize there was a cartoon. But yeah, Henry and the Bucket Full of Dinosaurs was like my go-to book when I was a kid because I love dinosaurs and I wanted to be a paleontologist and it had a, he had a bucket of them and they was, I wanted that so badly. It was so cute. Yeah. 
That was that was me as a kid. Small jelly. Oh my god, look at these good dances. Ten out of ten on your dances today, guys. Hell yeah. It looks very merry. Yeah, he's very merry. He's very merry. Happy days. You want to be you also want to be a paleontologist. I I really wanted to be a paleontologist. Uh, to be honest, I still wouldn't like Listen, if, if the opportunity to become a paleontologist fell into my lap, I wouldn't necessarily say no, I'd still kind of love it. Um, I used to love, I was very lucky, so I lived uh, in the south of England growing up. I'm not going to dox myself and say exactly where or anything like that, but I lived in the south. And it's very well known, a lot of those areas there, for collecting fossils. Like, there are just hundreds of fossils. Uh, and a lot of the beaches that I'd go to as a kid, like, you could just find them. Uh, in the river that was near our family home, uh, you could just find fossils in the river. Like, they were just there. We found some really, really good ones. And so I got very passionate about it very young because it was such a good area for it. And so, yeah, I really, really wanted to just, like, go on and do that professionally. And I used to, every Christmas, ask for the kits where you could, like, practice digging up dinosaur bones. Like, they were fake plastic ones, but they were, like, encased in, like, concrete or gravel and stuff. And you could, like, practice, like, chipping away at them. I used to do that every single year around Christmas because I'd ask them for them for Christmas all the time. Uh, and I loved it. Hell yeah. I ran for two seasons between 2005 and 2008. Oh, nice! Hell yeah, mermaid? Nah, I don't really want to be a mermaid. I wanted to be a paleontologist. Like, I guess I wouldn't say no to being a mermaid either, but it wasn't like, it wasn't my go-to job. I did that with a friend with me! You went fossil hunting? Oh, I love, I loved it. I loved it. I was so, so lucky with the beaches we had near us growing up because it meant that I could do that. And I felt like there was always a relatively good chance that I'd find something. Even if it wasn't like anything particularly historically impressive or anything like that it was still good also i don't know if you could hear that but that was the doorbell that might actually be my black thread maybe not that i need it today because we've gone we've gone for, you know <laughs> no black thread but uh that might actually be my black thread which would be really really good because then i wouldn't have to worry about it so much tomorrow so fingers crossed fingers crossed that is that for tomorrow go and that is another little swirl, another little swirly thing. Bunch of shark teeth, yeah, shark teeth, some nondescript enamel, probably vertebrae and a dolphin tooth. Did you find any, oh God, what are they called? Cuttlefish? Because there were always tons of like, I, I think they were cuttlefish carcass, you know? You, they're everywhere. We used to find a lot of those when we were looking. Lots of cuttlefish, <laughs> all the time. Which is like not a fantastic find, but it's, you know, as a kid, you're still interested. Hell yeah. Ah, uh, they're fossils so expensive to buy here. We have Megalodon too. <gasps> Megalodon. Megalodon, very cool. Megalodon, very, very cool though. I found the biggest one. It was the only thing I found. She found all the other stuff. She has the eyes. I think the more you do it, probably the better you get at it, right, as well. Hell yeah, but listen, you found stuff and that's, Im that's impressive. A cuddlefish? Maybe, maybe. I've never met the fish in person, so it could be a cuddlefish. I, you know, I couldn't, I can't confirm nor deny. <laughs> I would need to meet them first. There we go. We got another, another swirly roll in there now. Is it looking, is it looking nostalgic yet? <laughs> I'm aiming for the nostalgia hit. It looks nostalgic to me, but I don't know. My nostalgia might be different to a lot of other people's in chat. But this is uh, sleeping over at your grandparents' house. That's that's the nostalgia that I am uh, that I'm vibing with for this piece, and so far, it's hitting it for me. <laughs> it's hitting the nostalgia for me. I'm just gonna be emotional embroidery session <laughs> as I nostalgia myself into emotions. Oh dear. No cuttlefish, I think I found a couple before her. Her area has lots of shark teeth and every time they dredge the harbour- Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, because sharks as well, they just keep growing teeth forever really, don't they? So you don't have to worry about finding a lot of them, like, kind of normal. Keep making them after all. I found, I think my best finds, and I do not- So the, I don't remember what it's called, uh, but you know when like you have like a fossil imprint and it fills in with crystals? I don't know what that's called. So you'll find like fossils, but there's not actually fossils in them. They just look like fossils, but it's actually like an imprint of what probably was a fossil. And then it's like filled in with like minerals. So it looks like a crystal. 
Does that, does that make, you, you know what I'm talking about? Does anyone know the technical word for what this is? But we used to get a lot of those in the rivers near our house. And I found like a really good sized shell that was like really, really pretty. And you could see all of like the lines in it because of where it was on the stone. The problem was the stone was about yay big. And I like carried it back to the house because I was really pleased with it. And my parents were like, do you want us to crack it open and see if there's actually anything inside? And I, ne I always said no. So I never actually saw if there was anything inside that one. But it was my favorite. It was like the, the prize of my collection vibes, you know? Because it was just so beautiful. It was like so perfect. Like the crystals were just, just, just perfect. And I, I just didn't want anything to ruin them, even though there could have been something exciting inside. Thing is, we left it at that house. We didn't take it with us when we moved house because it was a big stone. So whoever lives at that house now, maybe they cracked it open. They have it now. They have my prize, prize fossil, because that one wasn't actually a fossil. My prize fossil was one of the few actual not fossils that I had, but <laughs> I still really, really like that one. Trace fossils for the imprint. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting thing where like, I'll see if I can find a picture of what it would have looked like. Not from, I, I don't think I would have any pictures of it because I wouldn't have had a camera, but uh, crystal imprint fossil. Oh, fossic. So I can kind of show you what it looks like. Ba -ba -da. See, it's not like any of these. Oh, there's probably a name for it and I just don't remember what it is. And it's really cool. Really, really cool. But it doesn't, it doesn't really look like any of those. Any of them even close? Not really. If I just do crystal fossil, maybe that will come up with more things that are close and I can search from that. Yeah, see, I'm getting like a lot of very, like just decorative things. They're very pretty. Oh, oh. Okay, it's very similar to this, um, but like a bit more sparkly. I wonder what that's called. Is it called an or? Is this what it's called? An or? No, that's just a type of fish. Okay. Oh, it looks like that kind of though. It do be similar, but not quite. Not quite like that. I might have to get back to you on this. I'll get back to you on what I had. Because <laughs> I, 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 I can't seem to find it. Oh, dear. Rubbings, like some folks do with gravestones. Uh, maybe. They were relatively flat, but then we did sand them a bit, so it was probably our fault as well. Because you wanted to see how much was in there without breaking it open. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I might have to. I mean, there's a chance as well if I ask my parents, they might know what it is. Because obviously I was a child, so my memory is not quite so good. I could probably ask them and see if they know what it is. Oh, this is kind of similar to this. But like, I think there's actually a shell in there, whereas mine wouldn't probably have had a shell inside. So yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm sorry, I do not remember what it is off the top of my head. My bad. All right, that's fine. I stick to what I'm good at, which is not paleontology, it's more embroidery. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, we've only been going for a couple of hours and this is already, by the way, uh, <laughs> pretty good. I do have a few details that I'm going to want to add, but I'm, I'm actually very happy with how this is turning out. I think it's very cute. The little pastel outlines, I think, while they may have been because I'm running out of black, I think they're a cool vibe and they actually look pretty cool and I like them. There's a little paw print on this one. Actually, uh, interesting, interesting fact about this, which I don't know if all of you will remember, back in, I want to say November last year, or maybe it was October, we did a making a cosplay in a day challenge where we, I bought like a scrap bag of fabrics, like fabric scraps, and I used those to make a costume. So we made an entire costume in a day out of fabric scraps and offcuts. Um, so we, that was, it was last year, I think at some point, near the end of the day, uh, end of the day, end of the year. Um, and the, all of the fabrics that I've used in this one are from that same bag of offcuts. 
because I figured I wouldn't cut into any larger pieces of fabric. So these are all the same off cuts that we would have done for that cosplay. <laughs> Except obviously using them in a different way. I almost kind of prefer this. But then I think it's because it's a little bit easier, like a cosplay takes quite a bit of work. Let's do around there, like so. Nice. One bow ruffle done, it's time for a snack break. Hell yeah, get your snacking on. Very important, feed your brain while you're working hard. There we go. I've always wanted to do rubbings as a kid, but even though the child is not old enough. Ah, yes. We used to do, sorry, it's not quite as exciting maybe, but we used to do a lot of plant rub stuff where like you'd get like a leaf and then you'd, you'd rub, you'd rub the leaf and get like leaf printing. And that was really fun. I like that. Honestly, it's still kind of like not a bad idea for art in general, just to like get those kind of textures from the source. Always makes them look a little bit more realistic, right? Yeah, that was one thing that I remember we did in school, which I think probably a lot of kids did that one in school because it's relatively easy. Uh, some sort of age requirement for rubbings? Well, if you're doing rubbings on graves, um, if there are family that is alive from the gravestone, generally I think it's kind of frowned upon because it's disrespectful. Like you generally only do stuff like that for very, very old things like really old monuments and stuff like that because otherwise there could be seen a level of disrespect to the family that's still around i think it's the general vibe i could be wrong maybe there's another reason but i think most of the time it's to do with respecting the dead and not doing that to people who are still alive <laughs> or still have family that's alive you know there we are that's another little swirl in there. I've got one more swirl, which I'm going to do in this pink again, even though it's not quite the right colour, because I want to kind of have the two, two peachier pinks and then the two... Oh wait, don't cut it, I haven't knotted it, oh my god. Jelly! Uh, I want the two peachier pinks and then the two, like, I guess more old pink, maybe? Yeah, maybe, maybe that's the way of putting it. I've still got some thread on here, so I can still use this. We'll flip straight across. Maybe I'll do the curly bit inside and then no, actually I won't do that because that will <laughs> we need to stitch the outside down, otherwise we'll move around a lot. Plus this one is like one of the few fabrics that is fraying a little bit, so let's get that in there nice and sturdy quickly. I just really like the pattern on this one. Like, it's a little old-fashioned, but I think it fits the theme really, really well. I gotta I gotta have that one. Even though it's not quite the same colourway as the rest of it. It's worth it because it's it's I don't know it fits the theme so well go and then I will just put a quick one in there to fill that space in even though I don't think it will add much structure there you go okay. and hold these bits in a little bit too Sorry, I wouldn't normally do that, it just looked a little odd. So I fixed it a little bit. There we go. And keep going. Oh, there's a bit of glue there. See that that's so much harder to stitch through. I really wanted to wait till the glue had dried though, because I figured if I didn't wait till the glue had dried, I would probably ruin my needle. And while I do have a whole pack extra of uh, hand stitching needles, because I'm doing a lot of hand stitching for this, but also just for cosplay in general, I'd rather not ruin any if I can avoid it. <laughs> I want to save as much money as possible on materials. There we go. And... Oh. The glue. The glue. Where's my pliers? Here they are. Little jewellery pliers. Very, very useful things. I'm just going to use these, I think, for a second because... Yeah, that way I can hold the fabric down as I stitch it. Oh, did I lose a thread there? I did. I must have pulled it too hard. But I can, I can hold the, the fabric down as I pull it and that way I don't have to worry about what would you call it? Like pulling the fabric out of the hoop too much? I think it's inevitable that it happens a little, but I'd rather make it not too much. All right. No, no, no. And can I re-thread the needle? I can. Nice. Oh, I think I've still got a little bit left in this needle. 
I get to the end? That would be pretty nice. Oh, look at that, very much be playing thread chicken here, but it would be, it'd be nice to finish it in one go. I think, I think that's not gonna happen though. You know what, it's fine. I've got like a whole nother piece that I can use. Why am I playing thread chicken? There's no reason. Go and pull that through there. Nice knot. By the way, uh, so has anyone, I, so I don't normally care that much about movies, but because I've seen so much advertisement for it, has anyone seen either Barbie or, or Oppenheimer yet? I'll be honest, I don't think Oppenheimer is, is probably up my alley too much, but I am kind of curious about Barbie because I like, kind of like kitschy films and it kind of feels like it fits into that sort of vibe. I used to get Barbies from the car boot sale a lot as a kid, <laughs> but I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I was like, I, I don't know, like I had a lot of toys that I liked. I don't think Barbie was ever quite my favorite, but I did like it when I was younger. i uh, not seen any of them, have not seen either, but I want to see Oppenheimer. Okay, well when you've seen it, let us know. Let us know what you thought. I uh, did. Nope, sorry, not that big on movies. Yeah, me neither normally, honestly. I'm just like curious about that one in particular because I've seen so much advertisement about it. I guess a lot of people are talking about it, but yeah, I won't be seeing it in movie theaters. So <laughs> I am, I'm living vicariously through everyone else being like, who's, who's watched it and did you enjoy it? I know a lot of people are dressing up to go to see the Barbie movie, which is kind of fun. Eventually it would destroy Barbie, but that's Benny's. Yeah, I don't know if I give that opinion too much weight, to be quite honest. <laughs> Out of all of the opinions, probably not that much. <laughs> Honestly, I'll take on a Barbie cosplay with a cowboy hat to block the eyes. <laughs> a blind cosplay Barbie, yes. Oh dear. Also, Astro, good morning. I hope you're doing well. I don't know if I have that much pink fabric right now, to be honest. I'd have to, I'd have to grab more pink fabric to do a Barbie costume, I think. I have like a lot of scraps, but not a lot of big pieces for actually making like an outfit. And I wouldn't be against it. I don't know which version though I would do. I'd have to look through the outfits and see which one. Cause to be honest, like the Barbie that I had growing up that I really, really liked was the Rapunzel Barbie. And like, that's just Rapunzel. <laughs> So it's not really Rapunzel. I mean, technically it would be Rapunzel Barbie, but it's basically just Rapunzel. It is not a very, uh, I don't know, exciting or original one. Go. Any verse? Yeah, the opposite. Exactly, exactly. It's like that would make me want to go see it more. I well, was at a convention. Oh, lovely. Oh, I hope you had a really good time. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, I get you though. You need to recover after conventions. They're very, very tiring. One movie I'd definitely go to, but it's in October. That's the uh, FNAF one, isn't it? I think I remember you talking about that. Oh dear. I think it's the FNAF film. I'm gonna guess. I, please let me know if I'm wrong, but I, th I think I know. I'm relatively confident with my guess here today. It is the FNAF movie. I knew it. <laughs> oh dear. The roller skating one has a cool 90s pattern. Yeah, I have actually seen that one. I've seen that one floating around and I do, I do like the pattern. That is exactly what I would have gone for in a Barbie when I was younger, to be fair. Like that is the vibe. That is the vibe that I really liked. Absolutely, if I had seen that outfit on a Barbie, I would have been like, yes, I like that one. I think I did have some Barbies with funky patterns, but I, again, most of my Barbies were second hand. So I don't exactly remember like if they had a specific theme or not because they wouldn't have come with like the box art. They were just like a, you know, they were just a Barbie that I had. They might not even have had their original outfits and I would have had no way of knowing. Oh dear. Laugh, yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> there we go. That is, I th is that all of the outlining done? I think that it is. All the outlining done. We still have some patches to do, but look at his bedroom. Look, he's, he's got so much bedroom stuff. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of all of his bedroom bits. Uh, we need to give him some patches. I am thinking to maybe do like the pink patches. So I could have actually not unthread my needle then, huh? I am thinking to do like a little pink like selection of patches. 
Oh dear. I just think it's cute, you know? I think it's cute. What? Two cosplays who do Barbie and Tangled and Rapunzel. Oh really? Oh, yeah, I had so I that was one of the few that I remember asking my parents for as I really wanted the Rapunzel one. And so I had the Rapunzel one new. Whereas most of my Barbies weren't. But that one I know I specifically did get it new. And I, I loved it. I loved it so much. It was really, really cool because I had like a button in the back where you could like extend the hair out. It was really cool. <laughs> Love to sleep. Take care, Gev. Get, look after yourself. Get some good Z's. Ah, oh dear. Second hand are normally clothless. A lot of them had their hair cut, but uh, most of them had clothes. For me, at least. Like the ones that I got had clothes, but they, they were often without, uh, without as much of their hair as you might expect to see. <laughs> for a Barbie. Yeah. They're definitely not like as as new as they could be. Ah oh dear, so cute. Yeah, it's a lovely idea. I love seeing people do like little group cosplays, so I think it's lovely. Very I'm very for it, you know. What? Yeah. I will outline this patch, but I just want to get the patch in first before I do the outline because otherwise I think I'll lose the outline and the fluff. So get the patch in first and then we'll move back to do the outline. Go. Oh, no, I only just threaded it again. What the heck? <laughs> There you go, we got it, we got it, we're back. Back in business. I'm trying not to pull it too tight, but I think, I think as the fabric is so fluffy and thick that it is just, even though I'm not pulling it that tight, it looks like I'm pulling it really tight. You know what, that's okay though, we'll live. use my pliers on that one that's there you go <laughs> that's not very easily coming out i can see just about the outline where i put the patch i will stick to it do you think I, I don't know if this is interesting to you guys but i do do a sketch before doing basically every single embroidery that i've been doing if you're ever interested i'd be very happy to go through my sketching process <laughs> But I also am very, like, it might be a bit boring for people that aren't doing custom embroideries. So, like, I would also get if you didn't want to. But I can do it. I've got them all to one side, probably, at this point. I might start chucking them soon, but... But now I have them. What? Go, and I think one more will get it to the length that I wanted it. Just a little patch. Do it. Do it. The sketches, I could. I could show I could show them quickly and then I could chuck them away to be fair, because they are taking up space on my desk. And I'm trying to keep a relatively clear desk during this process. Ooh. Yeah, why not? You know what? I'll show you I'll try and remember to show you in the future. I can show you the ones I've already done, but it I won't have as much. But um I can show you this one kind of well. Um so this one. Look at that. There he is. So 